are you guys doing? Chilling. Yeah. All right. Today All we right. got some new people on here and some old people. We got the boys. We got the 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 gringo. <laughs> <laughs> I got mean, we got we got Ruben. Yeah. Is that is that what you go by? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ruben, Ruben's fine. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. Why are you so shy, bro? I don't know, man. It's a first experience being well, on the podcast. Uh, I had you in front of the camera before. It's pretty comfy, though. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Different situations. You, you, gotta, you gotta speak <laughs> close to the mic. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so yeah, this uh, this is our homie, and we're back with the legendary the Mr. Dando. The legendary. <laughs> we're back, we're back, we're back. How we doing, bro? How we doing? Good man, good man. F- focusing a lot of music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mario, yeah, making music too? Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, playing a lot of music. Uh, I've been going to jam sessions. Okay. G- jam sessions. And uh, it's a lot of fun, man. It's like uh, when nothing makes sense, music makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Gets me through shit. Yeah. It's fire, man. Yeah. yeah. I saw you, man. I saw you doing the vocal shit live here. That shit was dope. Yeah. I saw you posting on your story that you were recording in the bathroom and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also <laughs> dope, bro. Are you planning on chasing uh, the vocal thing? Trying to be the voice of your own music? Or is that not something you're really mm-hmm. interested in? Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. Well, uh, it, it started out as a, as a kind of experiment to, to like give other people I, uh, I collaborate with like a vocal ID. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I was like, yeah... Um, I my my yeah, might as well try it. Like, yeah. so uh, I'm gonna see where it goes. Uh, nothing planned uh, as as like vocal performances or something. But I'm gonna keep making music, man. Okay, keep that's keep yeah. singing. Yeah, try it out, man. It's a vibe. It's, it's, uh, I really like. You haven't heard it, right? No, 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 no. I told oh him today that I wanted to go with him. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's like actual session. vocal performances. No, that's why I want to go with him yeah. to a show to see him perform. Yeah, yeah. gotta invite us too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm down to go, man. Yeah. Nice, and uh, this is this is our friend. You guys have never seen this dude before. <laughs> um, I haven't seen him in six months, and now he's back from from uh, Aruba. Aruba, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a crazy uh, experience. Um, I uh, tell you uh, what I did. <laughs> I, I mean, t- tell them what you did, bro. All right. So, um, for the last five months or six months, I've been uh, doing a renovation on a home. So. Um, I went over there and uh, I got to live in the house and I got to do the own my own renovation. So um, without help from any contractors or anything, because it's cheaper. Because yeah. uh, in the beginning, I got a quotation and it was, I think, like 15,000 uh, euro to, yeah. to build a bathroom and a uh, room on the second floor. Yeah. But yeah, being cheap, yeah. not wanting to spend that much you money. You tried yourself. I tried to do it myself because yeah. um, I used the knowledge that I got from school. Yeah. And I was like, Let's see if if it works, right? Mm -hmm. So basically those um, four months I started um, doing everything myself. Concrete, um, steel, uh, the walls, the floors, tiling, uh, piping, uh, water, everything myself. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a a lot of work, but it's very fulfilling. Very fulfilling to build your own room, bathroom. Yeah, to do something with your hands, you know. Especially because you you said uh, because of your school, because you study... Architecture, yeah, Balkan, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, what is that even called in English? Architecture, right? Architecture and engineering. That's yeah, it's like yeah. S- uh, it's like engineering, yeah. like pseudo civil engineering in a way. Yeah. No, not civil. No, no. no. no but like that, I don't know how uh, how else to to say it. The bachelor's in English is called uh, bachelor's in architecture and engineering. Oh really? Yeah, that's ah, what right. it's called on the paper. It says that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why. Cool. But here, if you if you say Balkan, then everyone's like ah. You like the cheap architect. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. In English, it has more status. Mm. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But, um, but yeah, man, it was it was heavy. Doing renovation is heavy, yeah. heavy work, but yeah. cheap. Total cost, four thousand uh, euro instead, instead of yeah. fifteen. Mm. Fifteen. Mm. Yeah, mm. it's a big difference if yeah, you do it yourself. Really labor difference. is expensive. Uh, it will probably be way more than fifteen. Yeah, yeah. I, I get yeah. why the labor is expensive because it's yeah. it's tough. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, tough yeah. work. You know, I had the I had the option between two weeks and having it done or four months. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's longer, but you learn a lot. Yeah, yeah, like uh, mixing concrete, uh, 
making the walls with the wood. Uh, you had no help, no family members for. Uh, no, 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 oh, okay. no, no, fa- no, my family. No, I'm the only guy in the family. So yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's basically yeah. me, myself, and I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. um, oh my god! I could imagine yeah. how fulfilling that would be, especially for you, because you kind of w- enjoy it, making your own house. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. Uh, but after a while, you get sick of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After, yeah. after, yeah. after yeah. like the, yeah. the the fourth month, I was like, when am I gonna finish this? Yeah. Is it now like complete, or there are like so other projects? It's done. No, it's it's done. Nice. It was two things. I, w- I was gonna do the the bathroom yeah. and the room, and then uh, like I would do that in the morning, and then in the afternoon around four, when it's not too hot outside, I would do the garden. Yeah, I did okay. the whole gardening too because the house was uh, abandoned for like two months. Yeah. And the people who lived in the house, they really didn't take care of it. Yeah. So um, I basically did yard. I was a gardener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did the, the yard work. Uh, I even made my own uh, like a pathway. And yeah. then with the you put the plastic and then you put the tiles on top and then the, the stones. So it's yeah, it looks really nice. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. I applied that, that design <laughs> to it yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was also cheap to do because yeah. <coughs> they quoted me the job 4,000. Euro to do it, and the gardening. It yeah, yeah, the, b- the the path to make the path was so like four thousand. So that was added to the fifteen thousand oh yeah, of the, the added to that. The separate yeah. company, but yeah, it was four thousand. So I was like, uh, if I'm doing the bathroom yeah. myself, why not do the the garden myself too? So I did yeah. the garden too, and that was, um, I think total I came out in like sixteen hundred mm. euro. So yeah. you s- really see nice. with labor and stuff, they really um, ask a lot of money. Yeah. So. My recommendation also to people here is if you can do it yourself, do it yourself. I think yeah. the, the biggest problem for people is that they're afraid to fuck it up. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, let me yeah, just yeah. pay for it, then uh, I'm sure I'm getting good stuff. Yeah, no. Yeah. And no. I think that people um, overestimate how difficult something is. Yeah. They yeah. always think like, yeah. oh yeah, there's a reason why it costs that much money. It must mean that it's uh, so hard that I can't do it. Oh, there's pe- th- people go to school for that. There, there's a reason why they go to school for that. Yeah. But all of those stuff, you just like look up a tutorial or even just ask people around like, yeah. yo, do you know how to do this? And people can are like really, really quick to explain that it's so easy to do and you can do, do it on your own. And p- I think it's like a part of the being comfortable with what you have and your living standards and doing that. True. You see, I, what I think it is um, also is you don't have to be afraid to make mistakes because yeah. you're going to make the mistakes. Mm. Uh, but yeah. the thing is, then you get the chance to fix the mistakes. And mm. at the end of the day, no one's going to notice the mistakes because mm. you don't have to do things at, uh, let's say, um, you don't have to really do everything to the exact measurement yeah. when you're in the in the raw building phase, right? Yeah. It's only when you're going to do the tiles and uh, the walls, you're going to plaster the walls and then paint over them. That's when it's really like important to do the things neatly. But I mean, the wood, it doesn't matter if, if it's a centimeter or two centimeters thicker or th- thinner. You cut it just not short enough or two. It doesn't matter because yeah. no one's going to see it. Because yeah. yeah. I see it like makeup. So you just <laughs> build a whole structure yeah. and then you just make up over it and it looks nice yeah, that's exactly. all it really is so i was surprised at how it's very labor intensive because mm. you're working the whole day with your whole body but it's super easy to do yeah mm. yeah. yeah and and especially here i would say even easier because you don't have to focus on the outside yeah everything's inside your house because most yeah. people you know live in apartments or yeah. you don't have a garden yeah th- I- yeah and i mean yeah it's easier it's yeah. easier mm. here i would say yeah. so yeah. definitely do if you're gonna do a renovation, don't pay the people. Do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah make mistakes. Yeah. But yeah. what would be the cost uh, of doing it, like the bathroom and the gardening part? Here, yeah, here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be more expensive. It, yeah, yeah, it yeah. depends. On, no, no, because uh, Aruba is ten percent more expensive than Holland, so it's gonna be cheaper. No, but uh, the labor also. Actually, it is an island, so I don't know. But like the wood and all that supplies, would supplies be cheaper as well? No, the uh, here cheaper, not over there. Really? Yeah, because what? everything has import tax, mm. so everything's imported. Yeah. There mm. is nothing on the island. Nothing grows there. Nothing's produced. So yeah, exactly. yeah. it is an island in the. Mm. That makes sense. In the Caribbean. Yeah. Like, uh, like I, I would think it's cheaper in Panama, right? Because yeah. it is yeah. less. Uh, Pan- it's like a lot of stuff is gr- uh, grown on land. Yeah. And you just have like wood laying around everywhere. Yeah, yeah especially wood. For the I people think. don't know, I lived in Panama also for majority of my life. But yeah, Panama they they produce their own raw materials, yeah, exactly. wood and concrete. Is Panama big? It's bigger than Holland. It's three yeah. times bigger than Holland, but yeah. it has three times less population. It yeah. has one city. Yeah. Makes sense. One one big city. One big city. Yeah, okay. yeah. and then Panama City, right? Yeah, two m- two million people live in the city, and then yeah. the rest are like spread out across yeah. the country. So you yeah. have a lot of land. Yeah. For cheap. 
Yeah. Th- yeah. They had a war uh, because of watermelon once. <laughs> Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Why? Um, y- you know the story? Or should I tell? I told you, you told the story. You told right. you told you. It's, it's funny when you tell right. it. So um, basically, um, Panama was under the American op- occupation yeah. because they had a dictator, and pa- and uh, the U.S. wanted to take uh, control of the the canal, right? Give them freedom. <laughs> Bring freedom. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, the story goes in the old city, so the like the Spanish fort city. Uh, there was this vendor who was selling watermelons yeah. for, I think, 50 cents. So this GI, one of the soldiers, American soldiers, he walks by and he wanted a watermelon, only he didn't pay for it. That was the thing. I think he didn't yeah. pay for it. He didn't want to pay 50 cents for a watermelon. So uh, the guy <laughs> obviously wanted his money. So a whole a whole um, riot broke out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. a whole riot. And, and I think like at, at the end of the day, like six people died. Yeah, what? so th- they had a whole like uh, the, the 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 population started fighting with the soldiers. U.S. soldiers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think it even escalated to a point where you had a couple of students that and there's a there's a statue in Panama about it that they jumped over the the U.S. controlled territory fence mm. and they hanged up a a um, uh, flag. flag from the from the Panamanian flag mm. and they got shot. By the the U.S. Yeah, yeah, the, they're horrible. The U.S. Yeah. is horrible, man. Yeah, and they uh, that they did that. Yeah, that stuff. Didn't they al- also yeah. like invade Panama City for a military drill, for oh like Saddam? Oh mm. yes, yeah. For Saddam. Yeah, yes, yes. The they they wanted to. Of course, this is like yeah, not this is kind of conspiracy, but allegedly, um, <laughs> allegedly. But they used Panama as a training for how they would deploy their soldiers and how they would do yeah. a land and sea mm. operation uh, to invade another country. Because they yeah. invaded Panama, and I think it's in '81, and then a couple of years after that, they went after Saddam. Mm. Mm. Same way, yeah. same exactly, same exactly, yeah. 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 Same doctrine, same. But did they territories. also take somebody from Panama, or? Um, they took uh, Noriega. Manuel Noriega was the was the name of the the dictator that they had, yeah. and he used to be a CIA operative, and that's 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 real. Yeah, so yeah. he used to be a CIA operative, and he used to sell stuff to the U.S. government. I can't remember if it's drugs or uh, probably uh, drugs, because around that time was yeah. uh, the time CIA was like funding right. all those guerrilla warfare. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So um, mm. after a while, they got tired of him. That he had he got too much power. So he was like, ah, I'm I'm better than the U.S. I'm stronger than him. And then the U.S. invaded him, yeah. and so it was <laughs> basically <laughs> a, a personal <laughs> yeah a personal vendetta. And then they. Yeah. Um, yeah, th- he still. I uh, he. D- I think he passed away, but he was in jail in Miami for like f- a bunch of years, mm. and then they extradited him to Panama back, and he stayed in jail in Panama, and he died there. I think. I think he's dead. Mm. He's pretty old. Yeah. But with the watermelon story, wha- was it like boiling up to that point? Yeah. Because I, ca- I can imagine like the tension yeah, was tension high. Yeah, tension because they were already under occupation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a crazy uh, story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a whole revolt because of a watermelon. Yeah. There's like a painting about it as well, right? Uh, probably. It's I very, it's I a very historic uh, event. Yeah, but uh, a lot of people prefer to to live underneath the dictator. Yeah, dictator. for safety. Uh, yes, safety. Because they yeah. used, to, I used to hear stories as a kid. They used to um, put the prisoners in planes, and they would throw them out the plane over the ocean, and you would never see them again. Yeah. Yeah, so if you if you committed a crime, cr- nobody wanted to commit a crime because you yeah. would die. Yeah. Yeah. They'll put you in a plane and, and throw you. That's don't, crazy. Don't quote me on it, but <laughs> I heard those stories. It might be true. Yeah. yeah. But crime and was like really Did anyone like make it back? Yeah, probably. <laughs> you got people that made it back. Mm. Uh, but you also got people that were uh, anti um, dictatorship because they would own land and then the government come there and say, hey, this is my land. And yeah. if you don't want to give me the land, I'm going to shoot you. And that happened. I know uh, a really good friend of mine, his grandpa got shot mm. uh, by the government. Yeah. And they took his land. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, so that uh, that does happen. Yeah. Let's see. Did the grandpa survive? No, he's dead. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe he survived. So and they were like, okay, now we take your land. Yeah, <laughs> no, they shot him, they took his land. Uh. Well, like th- th- doesn't the normal government do the same pretty much? Now? I mean, they don't shoot you except for the shoot you part, but they can be like, "Oh yeah, you know, no. we want this land now." No, that's yeah, that's yeah. Uh, in the U.S. They have that law, a- executive domain or something. I'm not sure what it's called, but now Panama, no, Panama's pretty chill now. They we do have a pretty bad president right now, pretty corrupt, uh, mm-hmm. and there were a whole bunch of protests uh, last year, 
uh, where everything was closed and you uh, and you couldn't get food or uh, gas or anything because the the roads were closed for the protest. Mm. And I remember it all boiled up to a point where this American guy shot two Panamanians to death because really? they were yeah because they were blocking the. There, there are still American soldiers there. No, not American. This is just oh. a some random, random American professor. It's oh just okay. a, a retired professor. Uh, that was living there, and he was like, "Ah, you guys won't get off of the highway." So he got out of his car. There's a video of it. He got out of his car. He just shot the two people. He got arrested. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's crazy to think that these people, you know, you're there in in another yeah. person's country, and you, and you come with that mentality, and you just yeah. fucking shoot yeah. two people and to to solve a problem. That's it's not the right way to go. Yeah. But they see they see it as U.S. territory. No, no, they don't. Sure. Not, not anymore. The, the Americans. No, because they got their they they had the uh, uh, Torrijos Carter um, agreement where the uh, Panama Canal and all the territories that were under American protection went back to the Panamanians. Yeah. Mm. So Panama's fully independent. Yeah, exactly. But I I still think that some people have the mindset of you know oh what yeah. it is still our country. You have a lot of um, expats, a lot of American GIs that live there where they married Panamanians and they stayed there. So you do have a lot of Americans over there, but. Yeah. I don't know if that mentality is still there. But did you also like have an American guy that like came to your town that was a serial killer? Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a have you do you know have you heard that story? Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think yeah. I did, but like that that should well, that should have me going too. Right. You have like a picture with him, right? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I do have a picture with him, and I also have his business card still. <laughs> really? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of business did he have? <laughs> yeah. right. Not a successful one. So you you can look him up online. Is uh, yeah. he's called um, Wild Bill, and then from Panama. <laughs> and uh, he m murdered a bunch of people. Um, so the story goes, when I was younger, um, because I used to live in a small town, yeah. uh, there weren't a lot of foreigners. So the foreigners that would live there, like you had Canadians, British people, Americans, Dutch people, um, they would all come together. Yeah. So this American dude shows up right in town. He opens a Harley Davidson shop uh, at a gas station. For like motor motorcycles. Bike, motorcycles. motorcycles yeah, so uh, we get invited. We go over there. And I was like a little kid, so I, I don't care. right? I'm just playing. And I remember I was there at the gas station and I look up and it's this big, tall, like like Viking looking dude, right? Yeah. So I like shake his hand, big hand, shake his hand. Uh, my dad, he loves talking to people. So he, he starts talking with the guy. They're all like socializing, laughing. At a certain point, the guy mentions that he had a, a Dutch, that he was Dutch, right? Mm -hmm. And my dad, you can't hear the Dutch accent because he's from Curacao. Yeah. So um, he's talking to him, and the guy mentions that he's Dutch. So my dad starts speaking Dutch to him. Yeah. And the guy just stares at him with a blank stare. Mm. He, like, I don't understand what you're saying, yeah. right? Mm. So then they were like, hmm, that's kind of strange. So, but the guy said he was Dutch. So that was weird. That was the first weird thing. So yeah. he had a Dutch passport because uh, a Canadian guy saw his Dutch passport. It was a falsified uh, password. Password. Uh, password. So then my dad tells him, here, uh, they exchange business cards, and my dad tells him he has a farm, and he wants to sell the farm. Mm. And he would love for the guy to come, the, the American guy, to come to our farm and see the farm with us, right? So I'm very happy that didn't happen. <laughs> because <laughs> after that, he never called. He never talked to us back. We didn't see him anymore. I think like four, th oh four or five years later, we, we see on the news, this man got arrested in Nicaragua for murder. And he was fleeing Panama because he murdered, in Panama, he murdered, I think, like four or five. Five people. Five people. Five yeah. people, yeah. Just five, five yeah. people. Five people. And, and one of them was trying to sell his house. I'm going to tell you what he did. Mm -hmm. What he did was he would buy the people, he would say he was going to buy your house, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he, he, you sign everything and you sign the documents. It's now on my name. And before the payment is done, he murders you. <laughs> he bears you on the land. And then he pretends to live in the house like it's his house. And the 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 the, the previous owners moved back to the states. Yeah. Yeah, he did yeah. that. So imagine how happy I am that he <laughs> did not come to <laughs> our farm because he would have just murdered us. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's really crazy because honestly, you don't even notice like the, that that the person can can do that stuff. Yeah. You don't know they're yeah. a serial killer. It's like they're just the most average looking dudes. You would yeah. not realize that they're, they're, they're murderers. Oh, that's, that's, uh, he looks really happy. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a guy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's good business. Good yeah, business. Yeah, he's he made business. a lot of he money, have probably. A, a foolproof business. Like, he gets free houses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but, um, so scary, man. That, that was, was really scary. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not the first thing you think about is that he could be a serious right? guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's cool to have his card now. It's like a collector's <laughs> item, like yeah. a dark. Yeah. 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 Morbid. But 2010. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I was 10. <laughs> was twenty okay? It's not yeah. that long ago, actually. No. Yeah. No, no, but it's. Uh, no. And uh, <laughs> what happened to him now? He's he's he in prison. He's still in prison oh in yeah. David, in the like a uh, two hours drive from the city I live in. You have Hard to you have to visit him. Oh. I'm not. I <laughs> 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 you almost killed him. <laughs> no. <laughs> so basically, this was his method of killing someone. Um, let's see. Prosecutors say Holbert befriended the victims, shot them in the head, and then buried their bodies. So your dad was like already a step c- yeah. too close <laughs> to yeah. the ending, bro. Well, you yeah, know man. why um, me and my mom suspected that he never killed us was because of my dad. Mm. Because my dad was too social. Because yeah. he murdered a bunch of retired Americans or yeah. Canadian people that were like retired. They, they're not socially interacting. Not everyone knows him. Yeah. But at that party, my dad knew everyone. He was popular. He was very yeah. popular. Yeah. So yeah. that I think it would have been too much heat yeah. if he had shot him. So maybe, yeah. oh. but for maybe <laughs> for a serial killer, that would be like the t- sensation he's looking for. It's oh. like I got away with the four, four, mm. pa- uh, four people in the past that were not known. Let me try something new. Mm. That that could but also be a possibility. It's, 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 it's like the hitman, uh, the the hitman game. You you go on a on a different <laughs> run. You go on the next difficulty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the different route. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing to add though mm-hmm. is that. Uh, he he man maintained that all three events were contract killings ordered by drug cartel, cartel associates. Mm-hmm. Because one of the guys yeah. he killed uh, was an ex drug dealer that escaped from prison. Mm. Well, you know, if you look into Press his background, right? he used to be a um, Confederate flag neo Nazi okay. dude in the U.S. Right? Yeah. Mm. So this dude is very shady. So I would not believe anything he <laughs> yeah. says. Because <laughs> yeah, he he told us he was Dutch. No, yeah, it's a bad yeah. lie because you don't speak Dutch. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's yeah. also uh, scary if you lie about something and then like the God. person you're lying to knows you're lying. Mm. Then it's very yeah, yeah. Because mm. my my dad told me he had a very like shocked look on his face. Mm. So, but I think my dad just laughed it off. You know, yeah. 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 Maybe he thought okay. they just a guy that grew up in the states right. or something. He didn't know the language right. because yeah. a lot of people like that exist too. Right. You yeah, don't think uh, serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. But uh, Very w- interesting. Would that also yeah. be part of his plan to have like a Dutch passport that it made things easier for him maybe to get away with shit? I don't know. One thing speculation, though, I don't know, man. Yeah. He he did say that um, several of the group that he was in, because it was not a confederate group, oh. it was a southern national patriots group, and there were several members uh, that were of African-American descent in the group itself. What the that supposed to mean? <laughs> uh, Confederates are like mainly associated with like white uh, yeah. supremacists. Yeah, yeah. And this was not uh, the Confederates. It was a group that was for the nationalists of the South. Oh, okay. So they care about the Southern culture. Okay. So he was a part of that. And he was like, there, there's like also black and people And part in of the South. that culture was murdering people. No, no, no. He said that the, the murders were uh, that he was hired by the cartel. Oh, okay, okay. Because one of them was an ex drug dealer, uh, a US uh, an American ex drug dealer that escaped prison, Mike Brown. Mm. Mm. So I don't know who Mr. Mike Brown is, I but he has know. a fire name. <laughs> uh, Brown is like common slavery name, right? Is was he really? black? I don't know. You don't I have to be black to have Brown as the as your last name. Oh, you got the last name of your owner. Yeah. So uh, that's true. Yeah. I, c- I can't find him, man. A.K.A. Mike Brown. I, I found it. Convicted felon, 1980. He was... Very damn, white. <laughs> Very white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He yeah. could have been a slave owner. Who knows? Mm. It looks like one. All right, yeah. Mr. Brown. But I imagine <laughs> it would <laughs> also be like a story he would say to make him look better. Like, mm. like oh, the person I killed was... Uh, it was an ordered, ordered yeah, kill. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? But they yeah. were like very weird. A serial killer has like a motive usually, and th- mm. this dude didn't really have like a psych- psychopathic tendencies when he was a kid. He like the first uh, ever like charge he got was like this, a serial killer. 
Yeah. Yeah, but maybe <laughs> he was like, you know what? I'm gonna leave my mark on the game. <laughs> he skipped yeah, the tutorial. Maybe he was doing <laughs> other stuff when he was young, but they just never found out. Yeah, maybe he was like killing cats true. and dogs in the streets. That's possible, That's bro. True. Who knows? He doesn't look too nice to kill cats and dogs. He <laughs> looks like one of the people that would kill a human, but wouldn't uh, wouldn't kill the cat. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what you mean. No. I get what you mean, but like, I don't know. Oh, and he's a biker. <laughs> Bikers are generally known for like killing people, but l- really loving like little animals. They <laughs> are <laughs> like having like giant cat tattoos on their chest and shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. bikers are really really nice people. Mm. Not to people though. That that is true. That is true. But that's not the craziest thing that's happened in really? my town. Yeah. What's the craziest thing that happened? <laughs> the uh, two Dutch girls that went missing. I don't know if you, you have I ever told you I that story. I think I've, I've told you. I've it. heard a story. Have they met yeah. missing recently? No, this was also I don't know. Look it up. I think it was maybe uh, 2015. Uh, two Dutch girls that went missing in. Uh, yeah, I've uh, seen it in the news. Yeah. I think. So basically, these two Dutch girls are on vacation. Chris yeah. Kremers and Lisanne of Rome. Is, yes. is that it? Oh, 2014. Yeah. 2014. Yeah. So these two Dutch girls, they're on vacation in Panama, and they're in Bukit, which is like the. It is like the uh, the town across the mountain because I live around a mountain, like yeah. a volcano. So you have the volcano on one side, on the other side you have one town, and the other side is my town. So they were on the other side, and um, the mountain's no joke. It takes like maybe eight hours minimum to climb it, twelve if you're slow, right? So you have to be well prepared and trained and have that guide because you can easily get lost. Because if nice. you get lost there, the you the forest is a couple of days walks, you know, before you reach any civilization or stuff because it's a big rainforest protected uh, territory. Um, so for some reason, they left their hostel. They took a taxi and went to the base of where the climb starts, the walk yeah. starts. And they started walking and they started at four in the afternoon with okay. no flashlights, no nothing. So without a guide. Without a guide. Okay. So just the two of them. So that's very weird to start off. Why would you do that? That's not yeah. smart. Anyway, they go missing, and I, it took a couple of months, I think. Uh, there was a whole operation, the Dutch military, uh, American military, I think, maybe, uh, and the Panamanian uh, military went looking for them. And uh, at the end of the day, I think they found uh, one shoe with a foot in it. They found one pelvic bone that was bleached. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And they found some clothing items and a backpack that were yeah. like five miles further from when the where the path is, something like that, yeah. right? Yeah. And they found a camera where there was pictures of them at night, like using it as a flashlight to be yeah. able to walk through the night, mm. right? So you would assume that they they probably went missing, they got lost, and they died, right? And then maybe they got eaten by animals, okay? Yeah. So the weird thing about that is. Why was there a bleached pelvic bone? Yeah. And not only that, I just read about it. Yeah. For someone that age, um, the pelvic bone does not break in half, first of all. Mm. And the second of all, uh, there were uh, pieces of cartilage missing mm-hmm. that stays intact for years before breaking down uh, okay. with natural uh, yeah. reasons, causes. Yeah. All right. So that I didn't know that, but that's also interesting. So here's some more information that the taxi driver that brought them there was found drowned in a river with his body, his legs out of the river and his upper body in the river. Mm. So if you like drown, yeah. So yeah. if you drown in a river, but actually you would, ex- you would expect the whole yeah. body to be yeah. submerged. Not how ha- it doesn't pull you. You know, maybe if there was a lot of rain, but I, I doubt it, yeah. right? So it's almost as if someone deliberately murdered the taxi driver. And some people also said that there were three people in the taxi car, uh, so four total, yeah. three people that the guy was bringing to the mountain, so another guy was with them, another tour guide. So a lot of people have speculated about what happened. So here's my, my theory. theory yeah. And based on a bit of, you know, deduction, you would say, because yeah. I know a man who also a dutch man who lives in Vulcan and he was very interested in the investigation and he was himself was a machuze so he mm. used to do he used to uh do espionage during the cold war yeah. right that, that's, uh, that's true so he's a very nice guy so he believes that what we're dealing with in in this situation is a um destination serial killer 
Okay. So someone who lives in a, in another country and flies to Panama to murder, and then flies back to his home country, mm. which okay. if you think about it is a very scary and and smart way of murdering someone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you go to a third world country, and you just where the infrastructure and investigation skills are are are, are less, and yeah. then you yeah. commit these crimes, right? So, what we think it's probably of what I then think after talking to him also and listening to what he has to say is that probably it was this guy that went with them, he murdered them, did what he did, right? Mm. Then he murdered the taxi guy to no witnesses because the investigation, it like blew up in the Dutch yeah. army and everything and they were a long time, they were busy. Mm. And then he left. And what makes me think that he comes back every so uh, often years is because uh, a couple years later, there was a small, blonde, American girl that looks just like these Dutch girls mm. strangled to death on a beach in uh, Bocas. You can look that up in Bocas. Uh, the uh, American w- woman gets strangled to death. So it's not the same MO, you would say, yeah. where he, where the whole body gets fucking pulverized, but yeah. it's strange that it's the same type of person, yeah. you know, because yeah. usually serial killers have a type, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I find that very interesting. And probably there are more. There are probably but more... There's a there's a major flaw in your theory. Tell me. And in the theory of the Dutch guy. Tell me. Uh, you're saying that he came in and then he went back after the killings. Yeah. Um, four months, uh, allegedly uh, around four or five months. Yeah. After the killings, they found a piece of skin fragments from Chris Kramer's that was fresh. Oh, that's weird. That's strange. Huh? That's that was really that was weird. way fresher than the other chicks. But yeah, in August there was, and they're like, um, like it it takes a certain amount of time for skin to decay and right. for the body to decay, right. and it was in a way later stage, in a w- way earlier stage of decay than the other girl. You think he kept them hostage, killed one, and then killed the other one a couple months later? Well yeah, he preferred that's in, the in the in the in the jungle. That would make yeah. sense, but nobody would have to have some infrastructure to keep them in the jungle, right? Because hmm. you would have to feed them to keep them alive for four yeah. months, Hold and you would have to feed yourself to keep. You know, this actually doesn't make sense because four months. that's what I'm saying. The this first, the first, um, the pelvic bone is from the girl <laughs> whose skin was found four months later. So that the was the bleach one. Do you think like he, he kept like the body fragments like in a in a freezer it's and then fresh. Just randomly just decided to go like you know what I'm that just gonna uh, scatter these around later yeah, to make it like even more weird. It could be. Or he was a cannibal. That's why the pelvis was uh, broken. broken. Shit. Yeah, it could be because I mean if you if you freeze a body and then unfreeze it at a at a s- different date, it's hard for people to tell when uh, that person passed away. Yeah. So that could be very possible that he that he kept them in a freezer or something. But I mean, isn't that so strange? Actually, no, 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 no. Yeah. Really strange. Uh, mm. It was also strange, uh, Ruben. I don't know if you know about the famous uh, cannibal in Japan. Yeah, the one that killed yeah. the Dutch lady, yeah. ate her, and then he became a celebrity. Yeah, they said so it. Yeah, so strange. Do you know yeah. that story? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I watched so the video. That's fucking a terrible. Bro. The, the craziest part was like the porn. No, the craziest part was that he w- that he was sent back. To Japan and the Japanese government was like, yeah, yeah can't we don't care. Do, about yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. do you know the story? I don't know. Man. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> they bro. met. They oh. met in France. Yeah. yeah so no, yeah. he was studying in yeah. France. Yeah. This dude was an exchange, yeah. student, exchange student in France, mm. and he was like uh, 17, 18 at the time. Yeah. And he had his roommate, this Dutch girl, I think, or he went over to her place, and basically uh, he killed her, and then he ate her. And the the French government saw that shit. Uh, no, no, it fuck. was really stupid how he was found. Yeah. So I think also prior to his journey to France, he was already a cannibal. I think I remember something like that. When he was ah, younger, he, was he did something. He did something Fantasies. when he was younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I remember something mm. like that. He did something when he was younger. Maybe I think he was trying to have sex with a girl and he tried to bite her or something. Something really strange like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and then years later, he's in France, in, pa- in Paris maybe, I believe. And he was studying there and he met this Dutch girl he liked. And then one day, they were in his apartment and then he killed her. Actually, he ate uh, some of her fle- uh, flesh, and then he realized, when he was also having sex with the dead body, and then he realized, fuck, I need to get rid of this body before it starts to stink and mm. everybody will find out. So what he did was he bought a big suitcase, and he just put her body in it. 
and then he took it to the park and it was a really heavy uh, bag of course and then he got tired and he just went to sit and i believe some guy that was walking by of was in the park thought it was really suspicious that this small japanese guy was carrying this heavy uh, looking uh, bag <laughs> and he was like should i can i help you or something and the guy was like no 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 need no need then he was really suspicious and then he forced himself on him <laughs> he opened he opened the he opened the bag and he saw the the body and then uh, the police got him oh. the french police okay. then the whole case uh they locked him up and then the J- i think the japanese government uh, asked for him or the france was like we don't want a cannibal here we're gonna send you back to your government something in those lines then so he gets from france to japan and when he arrives in, arrives in japan the japanese government's like actually you didn't commit a crime. No, here no, no. They were like, like, we don't have the resources to to prosecute you, bro. Yeah, you're yeah. free to go. We're free to go. <laughs> so they literally <laughs> left him free. Yeah, the guy was free, and then some news uh, outlets got, got to him. Then they were making articles about him, s- writing books about him, and he c- kind of became like a celebrity in Japan. Mm, yeah. and they even got so far that there was this disturbing uh, company that wanted to wanted to make a documentary with him, and they got a hooker. And then they, they film it, literally, you can find the whole video. And the hooker is sitting with him and she's talking with him. And they say, yeah, tell her about your journey to France and shit. He's after like, yeah, after yeah, they already fun. fucked. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they fuck first and then and then afterwards they're like, oh, yeah. yeah he's <laughs> no, he, he, he <laughs> a cannibal. So like, yeah, he killed, killed the woman girl, and ate her. Do you know that? <laughs> and, then, and she was like... Well, but oh, Japanese people are messed up, man. Japanese people are messed up. Bro, ja- I, uh, I don't understand Japan hype, man. They're messed up, bro. Bro, mm. uh, honestly, man, I think that Japan is currently the most overhyped place on the planet. What do you mean? As a, con- as a f- as place a country, bro. Ah, I think it's as a bro, it's vacation not, desca- bro, destination. It's, it's it is so right. unsafe for women in general. It is really unsafe, bro. For foreign women, bro, there's people that literally like stalk women to their hotel rooms and like stay outside their hotel trying to l- look through the windows and shit. Yeah, and like the guy that went into the toilet. Yeah, and dies there and shit. And died in there. That's crazy, bro. Ja- bro, I, s- I saw like the, the oh statistics. Japan, Japan has like not that many <laughs> rape <laughs> cases and this and that. But I think that like it does have that shit, but people either don't talk about it because like in their culture it's a bad thing to talk about shit like that. Mm-hmm. Or they just like... Uh, the women just don't want to like also bring shape upon their family. That uh, yeah. I won't al- only man. say rape cases, but I think also that most of the creepy people are not like rapists, but they're just creepy guys yeah. that like do really strange stuff. And uh, but uh, as a country, they have done a lot of sus stuff. Mm. Also, but like with the live stream guy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys know the live stream guy? No, no. Uh, there's this famous. I think it was one of the first live stream programs ever on the planet and the, the how it started was they got a group of people together that had nothing to, to going in their life so they were broke students uh comedians on the, on the go and shit and then oh, 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 oh. Uh, I, I know yeah, this yeah i know this yeah. hold on we gotta we gotta stop and re- re-record bro Every no 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 oh. we gotta stop here and then we gotta yeah. continue the recording hold on yeah. all right guys too many technical difficulties. Half of the cast is gone. Um, we're going to f- round this episode off very, very abruptly and very shortly. But uh, we'll be back on Saturday on Twitch, YouTube, and Kick. And uh, see you then.